Hi there and welcome to our next lesson in our B4 topic all about it's all green and today we're going to be looking at diffusion and osmosis this time we're looking at animal cells. Uh, we're going to be focusing a little bit on red blood cells as the main main type of cell we're going to look at. Anyway here are our objectives. Okay so let's have a look at our objectives for this lesson. So diffusion and osmosis in animals. So by the end of this lesson, you should understand how osmosis can have an effect on animal cells such as red blood cells. So let's review what diffusion is. Diffusion is the movement of a particle from one place to another. Okay, so first of all, we'll look at what osmosis is. Now, osmosis is where we have um, a concentration gradient. Now, a concentration gradient means that we have on one side a high concentration and on the other side a low concentration. So if we look at this diagram, we have um, the concentration gradient and we've got the, the membrane in the middle. Okay. Now, the membrane is semi-permeable, which means only some things can go through it, other things can't. Now, when we talk about concentration in terms of osmosis, we're not talking about our sugar or salt particles, we're talking about the concentration of water, which is the blue ones. Now, what will happen is we want to try and get an equilibrium. So, the water particles, they are able to go through the membrane to try and get some sort of equal concentration. So we get a movement of water to try and balance out the equilibrium. Okay, so we want to try and get as much water as we can so that both sides are the same concentration of water, not of the sugar or salt, but of the water. Okay, so if we have a look at a red blood cell, okay, now we've got a normal red blood cell that looks ideal. Now, with this, the concentration of water outside the cell is the same as inside the cell. So we've got movement going in and a movement going out that is roughly equal. Okay, so we've got a nice equilibrium, which means we get a nice ideal shape for our red blood cell. Now, if the concentration gradient changes, and if the concentration outside the cell becomes higher sorry inside the cell becomes higher then what we have is movement going in and you can see that the donut shape that we did have is starting to push out so it's moving out and it's become swollen now on the flip side to that if we have water moving out of the cell, then the cell will become shriveled. And again, we've completely lost the round shape of the don donut here. And all the water has escaped, so we've, we've effectively shriveled up the, the cell. Now when we get osmosis in an animal cell, um, there's... Because we get the water moving into the cell, the cell that becomes swollen that we have seen here, eventually we can get that so that there's so much water going in that it bursts. And this is called lysis. It's where the cell actually bursts. Now, on the opposite side to that, if you have um, the cell shriveling up uh, and it shrivels up so much, it can become crenated. And this is the spelling of this word. So crenated means that it will shrivel up. Now, the difference between uh, animal cells and plant cells is we have a very, very strong cell wall in a plant cell. Now, if we have uh, osmosis of a plant cell, uh, because we've got the inelastic walls, so they're, they're very firm, if they uh, have lots of water going in, then it's measured by something called turgia pressure. And the turgia pressure tells you how much water is actually in there. 
Now, when a cell becomes has as much water in as it can, it becomes turgid. Uh, but then, when you lose the pressure and the the water moves out, then it becomes flaccid. Okay. Now, when it becomes flaccid, it can wilt and the cell contracts and it deflates like a balloon and this is called a plasmolysis okay so we've looked at the key terms we've looked at what happens to an animal cell when it uh, undergoes osmosis and we've looked at some of the key terms okay so that concludes our lesson on diffusion and osmosis in animal cells. A um, couple of things to, to remember that we have the bioconcave shape in the red blood cell that looks like the donut. It becomes swollen when you get the water coming into the cell and then it shrivels when the water goes out of the cell. Uh, a couple of other terms such as lysis, crenated, uh, the turgid pressure, turgid flaccid and uh, plasmosis as well so just just be aware of, of using those key terms anyway i hope you've enjoyed this and next lesson we'll be looking back at plants and transpiration bye bye